Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies and welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner combined with the Chassis Sim Tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a real treat for you. What we're going to be talking about today is aero map creation using aero surface fitting with Chassis Sim. Revisited. And the operative word here is revisited. So, Let's set the scene for our discussion today. First things first, creating aero maps is an absolutely critical step in race car modeling. And in particular, if we're talking CLAs north of about one and a half and car masses about a thousand kilos or less, if you're not doing this, you're really not in the game. And aero surface fitting was a concept that we came up with back in 2010, 2011. And it was, and it's proven to be a really efficient and great tool to help you come up with a um, uh, with an error map, in particular, the um, the ride height um, sensitivity error maps for downforce drag and error balance. That being said, over the years, there have been a few traps that have emerged for young players, and what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to talk about the origins of uh, of um, error surface fitting, but more importantly, we're going to show you what to look for and what traps to avoid. So let's get started. Okay, so what are the origins of aero surface fitting? So the whole idea with aero surface fitting is what we do is that we're effectively taking our right high sensitivity maps and effectively dividing them into front right height slices. And for each of those front right height slices, what we're doing is that we're applying a second order curve um, surface fit, but we're making a few assumptions here. First, first of all, we're assuming that there's going to be a peak value in that right height slice. And what we're doing is um, we're also assuming that that's going to happen at a, uh, the maxima of this is going to happen at a certain rear value of rear right height. And so what we're then doing is we're using a second order, uh, we're using a second order curve fit. And make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, the second order curve fit really is your work, uh, is really the workhorse of um, a curve fitting. Also combined with linear curve fitting, but second order surface fitting gives you a bit more flexibility. But look, I mean, we're nitpicking here. So effectively what we're doing here, as we can see in this diagram here, is that here's our CLA CDA error balance. And what we're doing is that we're um, specifying a certain rear ride height and a certain value of CLA CDA and error balance. We have a, uh, we have a, max, uh, we have a maximum. And what we're doing here is that we're applying a delta peak and a delta rear right height to look in, but we're also applying this A value, the curvature value. We specify a certain value of curvature value to get started, and we specify a delta um, of what to look for. And what we effectively do is we turn that over to chassis sim, hit the go baby go button, and chassis sim does a bunch of optimizations to minimize the error between your actual error data and the error map that has come up as a result of this curve fit. And effectively what we're doing, um, ladies and gentlemen, is we're wireframing the error map. So what we're doing is we're applying a second order surface fit for this particular um, sliver of front right height. We're applying a second order surface fit for that particular sliver of front right height and so on and so forth as we go through the whole range of um, the um, of the front right height um, envelope of our error map. And effectively what we're doing is that for each of these slices, we're applying this curve and we're looking in these um, deltas. So that really sets the scene for what error surface fitting is and how we piece that all together. Now, how do we implement this in chassis And Don't worry, we're gonna walk through a practical example of this very shortly. So what we've got here is that when you open up the chassis sim error modeling toolbox, you go to optimize the error map and this will come up. So these are the major things you're gonna play with. So what you're gonna have here is that with your max CLA parameters, what you'll do is you're specifying the max CLA parameters as a function of front right height throughout the right height um, envelope. And here, that max delta, is that you're saying, right, this is the search space that we're looking for. The curvature parameters, this is effectively how tightly and how much variation you want in the error map. What that, uh, so we specified that as a function of our front right heights and we specify a delta to look in. 
And we do exactly the same thing with the rear ride height parameters. What we do is we take a, we specify a ride height, to, an initial ride height envelope guess that we want to look at, and then we specify a delta to look at look for. And we do this for downforce, drag, and aero balance. So to show you what this looks like in chassis sim, so this is effectively our CLA parameter. So we've got our front ride height envelope there, and we've got our um, CLA parameter there. We've got our curvature parameter there. And we've um, got our um, and we've got our rear ride height um, ver variation per uh, parameter there. So that's effectively um, how um, these bits and pieces fall into. Now, the numbers to what to look for, and here is where the traps for young players come in. And I must admit, I should uh, I, I sort of owe everyone a little bit of an apology in the fact that. I really should have gotten onto this a lot sooner um, than uh, what I did, but that is spilt milk under the bridge. So the thing that you've got to get right first is the curvature value. That is that A value of um, the curve. The reason you've got to get this right is that if those numbers are too big, the what will happen is that the error map will look sort of okay in the values that you've modeled, uh, modeled for, but once you go beyond that, the error map gets really weird and really really wonky so what so what i would suggest is when you start uh, uh, with you start with a curvature value of 50 with a delta of about plus or minus 10 and indeed in the chassis M version 3.42 release that's actually going to be the um uh, that will be the new default value the next step is that you want to be playing around with your delta cla and delta cda and aero balance values that's probably your second order effect because once you get the curvature value right, everything else is going to flow downstream from here. So you then specify the delta CLA and CDA. And then once you're after that, you'll play around with the delta rear right height. But that really is your cherry on top. So let's look at this and that with the lens of an actual example. So let me go to chassis sim. And so what I've got is um, here is a car that I've recently worked on with um, what could only be described as a very, very odd error map. So what I've done is I've gone into simulate error modeling and I brought up the error modeling toolbox. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on here on the tab, click here to optimize the error map. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on the error results file. So remember one of the things I've talked about in early tutorials on how to do error modeling is that what you want to do is that you want to run the error modeling toolbox for a number of different right height sweeps. And that can be either from a runway test, it could be from on-track running. You're just basically varying the rear ride height to get as many fin slivers of the aero map as you can so you can build up a surface fit. So what we've done is these are um, those results. So I'm going to click on this. Now, the very important thing is that once we've done that, you click on populate aero uh, bounds um, from file. So that, what that's going to do is this, gonna, is this is going to populate the table for CLA, your drag, and your error balance parameters. Now, for this particular example, the drag results were a little bit um, wonky. The reasons for that, I'm not gonna get into. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus our attention on downforce and error balance. So what we've got here is, if we click on the max CLA parameters, this is our front right height envelope for that test, and here is that um, average CLA of the whole run. So what it does is it takes those numbers, averages out the CLA, and Boom, that's your start point. And what it then does is over on your um, max delta CLA, that's your standard variation. Now, for your rear ride height, um, uh, uh, for your rear ride height parameters, it basically goes through, takes a look at where the, where the peaks happen and basically averages those out. And so that's our rear ride height here. And this is also our standard um, variation. Now, the thing about it is, as I said before, everything else flows downstream from your curvature parameters. So currently, the chassis defaults are 300 for um, the whole thing. And that, and the only reason it looks like such a big number is this is a reflection of the fact that because chassis works in strict SI units, um, in terms of the right height numbers we're working on, they're typically in millimeters, which actually translates to 0 0.01, 0 0.02 of a meter, which is why these numbers are so big. And... And um, this is our delta. Now this is uh, now this is where the things where things are going to flow downstream from. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click here to optimize the error surface map. I'm going to click on OK, and we are going to run this up. So I'm going to click on one here, and I'm going to click on OK, and that starts the error surface map thing. So we'll just let that do its thing. 
Okay, so now that we're done, what we now have is that these results are now going to be presented in our CLA table and our error and balance table. And that, and where it's taking its right height references, uh, where it's taking its um, right height references from, is actually from the base error map that you specified in um, chassis sim. So let's take a look at the CLA table. So these are our slivers of front right height, and that's rear right height. So as you can see, the CLA table, it's okay, but it's not great. If we take a look at our average values that were about 1.27 or so, you can see here you've got a lot of variation. So it's reasonable, but it's nothing to, it's, it's nothing to write home about. However, we take a look at the error balance table. If we take a look, the error balance table is absolutely all over the shop. So this is, what this is reflecting here is that we're out of data. So you just go and go, ooh, what are we gonna do about this? So what we're gonna do about this is, let's now go back to the Shastim Error Modeling Toolbox and we'll click on Optimize Error Map. What we're now gonna do is, now these values will be saved um, from the error results file, but just to double check, I'm just gonna just repeat this process. I'm gonna go error analysis results.txt, populate error bound. Look, you don't really need to do that, but I'm just doing it more for completeness. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my curvature parameters. I'm gonna change this and to do change this, I'll just click on the control. I'm gonna change that to 50. I'm going to change that to 50. I'm going to go shift key, right arrow key to select all that, and I'll press L for linearize. And I'll click on OK. And I'm going to move that delta from 100 to 10. And I'm going to do the same thing, the same thing with the error balance. I'm going to click on here. I'm going to change that from 300 to 50. Change that to 50. I'm going to click on uh, I'm going to click on L there, and I'm going to click on OK, and I'll change that from 100 to 10. So that's all set up. I'm going to click here to optimize the error surface map, and I will click on OK. I will click on one to turn that on, and let's see where it comes up. Okay. Now that's done, let's have a look at the results. So going back to our um, CLA and error balance table, so let's take a look at the CLA table. Okay, we take a look at the CLA table right now, the numbers look a lot better. So we're not having, so that huge variation that we had is now gone, and that actually looks, uh, that actually looks a lot better. And indeed, if someone said, hey look, have you absolutely got to use this? I would say, yes, go for it. That being said though, if we take a look here where we're starting to get out of bounds a little bit, take a look at how there's a little bit of an uptick in that last column there. I'll talk to you about how you deal with that momentarily. Let's now have a look at the error balance table. And if we take a look at the error balance table, again, if we take a look at what's, go if we take a look at what's going on here, a lot more sensible, no crazy value. So that really shows you with the curvature value that 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 when it comes to error surface fitting, how it flows downstream from there. Right. So for our last uh, 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 for our last uh, uh, for our last examination, I'll just get rid of uh, get rid of a few of these. What we're now going to do is we're now going to go back to our error modeling toolbox. We're going to click here to optimize the error map. The last thing we're going to do is I'm just going to double that. Um, Delta max CLA, so I'm going to change that to 0.4. And for the max error balance parameters, I've got a delta error balance of about 3.56. Let's change that to about 8. Um, for uh, Let's change that to 8 um, uh, for, um, uh, for grins. So I'm now going to click here to optimize the error surface map. And of course, just to double check that I'm being thorough here, I'll click on the error analysis results uh, uh, tab, click on populate the error bounds, and let me just reset that. 0.4 and 8, and let's see what happens. So we'll click on OK there, we'll click on 1 there, and we'll click on OK. Right, now that's done, let's have a look at the results. So, looking at the results, we'll go into the CLA table, and one thing that I was most remiss in not pointing out 
is make sure that if you're doing a couple of iterations, by default, the file CLA table, CDA table, uh, CLA table, arrow balance table, CDA table is what Chassis will write in the same directory as the car file. So if you want to log this, just make sure to rename it. So let's start to take a look at the CLA table. Looking at the CLA table, okay, so as you can see here, you've got a little bit more, vari uh, you've got a little bit more variation um, and it's starting to traditionally look a little bit more like an arrow map. You've still got a little bit of an uptick here. This would probably be one of these things that if you knew running the car closer to the ground it got better and you saw something like that, this is something that you would stick with. In this case, I'm probably actually more comfortable sticking with that um, Delta CLA of about 0.2 because for this particular car, it didn't have a lot of ride height sensitivity. But that, again, shows you how you can dial that result in. Looking at the uh, looking at the aero balance. Okay, so here we've actually got a little bit more variation in um, the uh, we've got a little bit more variation in the aero balance. So that shows you that if you've got a car that you know has got deep uh, 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 peaks and troughs in the aero map, m moving that delta CLA uh, that um, that delta CLA delta aero balance and delta drag is a really good way of capturing that. Now for this particular car. We probably uh, stretch that a little bit too uh, uh, too far, but that shows you cause and effect. But if you're dealing with a car that um, has an arrow map that looks like Swiss cheese, expanding the search range of your Delta CLA, Delta CDA, and your Delta arrow balance is a really good way to capture that. But as you can also see here, the values here, they're not particularly outrageous. So again, it shows you that you've got a little bit of wiggle room in um, your mod mate. So. Let's uh, so let's wrap this all up. Okay, as we've seen, error surface fitting is a very powerful tool. That being said, you have to use it the correct way. And the thing and the key thing to get right is that curvature value. If you get that curvature value right, everything will flow from downstream. And your telltale sign is when the curvature value is wrong is is wrong, is that when you plug in uh, when you do your initial analysis and you look at the results, if you're getting huge, huge variations like CLA's going to minus 10%, CLA's going to like minus one or minus 0.5 or you know, plus six, et cetera, et cetera, if it's a low downforce car, of course, then you know that's your telltale sign to go, okay, you've got to relook at the curvature. And once you've done that, you then basically fine tune with things like your delta um, CLA and your delta error balance, just to help you fine tune what um, uh, to fine tune what you should expect. But one thing that I want to make really, really clear here: make no mistake, like everything else in chassis sim, this is a calculator. It's not a magic wand. It is a tool to help you understand what's going on with your error map. And just remember, well calibrated data always has the last word. And that is what you are tuning into. And if you do that, combining with the lessons we've discussed today, you're going to find that the chassis and aero modeling toolbox combined with these approaches with aero surface fitting is going to be an extremely powerful tool. And at that point, we'll wrap things up and we'll catch you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner slash chassis sim tutorial.